I'll go straight to introducing Jan Lovreyes. It's an honor to have her here. Jan is an amazing artist. Uh, she's always experimenting with social context, with what art means, with how art can be connected to different social issues and concerns. And she's also the founder and has been the director for many years of Open Engagement, which is, uh, is at the very least one of the two most important uh, conferences in the US around socially engaged art. To many people, it's actually the best conference because it has much, it's much more grassroots in nature, right? And it happens in a different city every year. It's a, it's a huge effort and has been running it for, for, for all this time. And so she's here, she's gonna, she, because she does what she does, she didn't just want to do a lecture. <laughs> she wanted to do a lecture that is also kind of a performance. And so that's what we're going to uh, have tonight. Uh, we're very grateful to Jen for being here, for putting all the energy and time it takes to do something like this. And for, to the band, uh, you know, we have the members of, of Deaf Cadence here, Trey, Scott, and Kim. So thank you also for joining this adventure. And uh, we'll be good today. All right, let's do this. Uh, in the last, you know, 20 years or so, uh, you have become like a key figure in what some people call socially engaged art or social practice and participatory art. So it's great to be able to talk to you about, you know, all that trajectory. And so I thought it could be interesting to start in, in somewhat of a mainstream place, like a museum. Mm -hmm. like people don't expect social, you know, while the, the field has changed, uh, when you started doing this type of work, museums were not necessarily open to to socially engaged art. How did you uh, work with the Portland Museum those years in kind of helping the museum open up to these types of practices? Can you tell us a little bit about the kinds of projects and initiatives you were uh, involved in? Yeah, for sure. So the work with the Portland Art Museum started, I think, in 2008. And it was very much connected to the program at Portland State University that I was co-directing with Harold Fletcher, an MFA in art and social practice. We got invited through the education department, like most socially engaged artists, end up coming through that channel to get into the museum because they were very interested in thinking of ways that the museum could be open to different kinds of audiences, have different kinds of engagements and really thinking about what kind of site the museum could be for public interaction and really seeing it as a public space and wanting to change how people interact with one another as well as with artworks in the museum. And when we were invited, it was through uh, Tina Olson, who was the new director of education at that time. And she was very interested in what we were doing in the MFA program, sort of understanding how we were working with artists, sort of embedded in communities, thinking about art outside of museums. What I liked the most about how we were talking about it internally was seeing the museum sort of as like a physical body. There was a lot of talk about like working different muscles within the institution that had maybe never been worked before, you know? And so that was what we were doing was sort of like straining <laughs> muscles within the institution, making it reach and move in different ways. It ended up being a lot of silo busting too, you know, because you would have to end up talking to so many different people in different areas when you come up with some wacky proposal, you know, the amount of people that need to be brought into that conversation is really, can be very vast, even if it seems like a really small request.
started as my graduate thesis work. I began organizing it in 2006, actually immediately following that residency experience in New York, and maybe for the first time really being connected to these people who were assembled from all these different places across the country and around the world who were doing this work and realizing how important that was. Like, I didn't have that before, and it was really eye-opening, and I felt like I knew that there were people doing this, and why weren't we coming together, and we were often doing all this work within our own communities, but then not building up our own community to support one another and share what we were doing, and so decided to take on this form of a conference and frame my graduate thesis work as organizing it to bring these artists together to present and share what they were doing. And I mean, it presented its own kind of challenges, right? Like, I don't, I don't frame open engagement right now as like, it is an artwork, but it is part of my work as an artist. But at the time, I had to frame it as an artwork and defend it and do the whole sort of formal, you know, defense and write it, all, all that stuff. But, you know, I think one of the biggest struggles in doing that was my committee feeling like, well, where's your work? And not being able to sort of value that labor of making that space as a, you know, a valuable contribution. Yeah. So it started that way. I had ended up being such an important sort of part of my education that was very much like self directed. It also brought in a lot of collaborators, like a project like this, even at a very small grassroots level, is not one you could do alone. I mean, worked with different institutions on a variety of levels, worked with so many individuals just in the community who were helping to review proposals or like literally housing people coming in from out of town, picking them up at the airport, all these sorts of small details. Anybody who has been to an edition of Open Engagement knows this, but you know, the majority of our learners are sp spread out around the world, you know, mm -hmm. not in the US. And so most of them will have not been to the conference. So I want to make sure that like people know that this is not a conventional conference. P these topics don't just get talked about. They get enacted, they yeah. get performed. And uh, you know, there, there's this one story that I love about like an apartment that like in, in one of the, you know, open engagement conference, you used basically the entire apartment building for the conference. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that works? Yeah, yeah. Like? Yeah, so I think that's a great example of really trying to be so, so in a community and figuring out how to creatively use resources to and how people collectively come together to make something happen. So it was in 2007 and we I had a few people who had agreed to host out of town presenters in their apartments and they all happened to live in the same apartment complex and so they had decided you know how about for the first night of the conference we kind of host this big dinner that will be all throughout the like, apartment complex and we'll open up our doors and it'll be a potluck but we'll have food and people can just sort of meander through the floors of the building and kind of come together in that way. And then we also had a presentation, like a slide lecture that night with so many people just crammed into someone's living room. Something that I think also has struck me about, you know, how you produce work and how you talk about it is this importance of kind of the collective voice specifically, but, but even more the, the idea of collective singing, you know? Uh, like in your in your lecture, you know, of uh, the dreamers, the lovers, mm -hmm. and he, you know, you actually play in the band while you lecture, and you dr play the drums, but you ask people to get up and sing along. And can you say a bit more about why that is so important to you, but also perhaps to others? Brian Eno said it best that it is about this. Like in group singing, you're able to sort of subsume your own ego. You're able to feel what it's like to be part of a collective experience in a group. And that partly it's about building empathy, you know. And I think it's also in, in building empathy has to do with vulnerability and sort of taking a risk and trusting the other people around you. 
because it can feel scary, you know, to have your voice be heard in public space sometimes, and that we actually don't get to exercise that often. And I don't just mean singing, unfortunately. I mean just in a lot of spaces in our everyday life, we don't feel like maybe we are heard. And so it's this space of trust, too, which I think is really remarkable. Picking the songs has to do a lot with like, well, what are the other stories that I want to bring into it? What are the other things that I want people to be thinking about at the same time? It's not only just about, you know, connecting with the song as an individual, but connecting that song to these other kinds of like larger stories.